All right. Uh, we'll go on the record now in this case, CR 22-211623, State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell. Mr. Daybell is appearing from the Fremont County Jail, represented by Mr. Pryor, who's appearing from uh, his office. We are conducting this hearing remotely by Zoom per the court's authorization for this status conference. The state is represented by uh, different prosecutors who are appearing here, notably Mr. Wood and Ms. Blake are appearing. And I understand Ms. Blake will be representing the state in any argument today. Council, I called this status conference also at the request of the parties just uh, to touch on some issues as we approach our trial setting, which will be coming up early next year. Um, there's a few issues I wanted to discuss. The first issue uh, involves the trial uh, and the length. We're, we're looking at, based on the experience we had in the companion case, timing to get questionnaires done and completed and reviewed as we conduct that portion of the trial for Vore Dyer before evidence. We're scheduled to start evidence on April 1st, and the court would consider that we'd probably want at least the full week before, like we had in the first case, if not some additional days. So uh, I'd like to get some input on when the parties think we should potentially commence the uh, passing out of questionnaires to uh, potential jurors who will then submit those. And then we'll, of course, take those back for review before we start the actual voir dire. Um, looking at the calendar, I was considering either, either two weeks or a week and a half. We did it in a week before. And um, I think this questionnaire, where it's a capital case, may take longer to both review and to fill out. So we may need to have some smaller groups. So uh, I'm looking at maybe starting that process the week of the 18th of March possibly on the 18th or the 20th. I, I don't know that we would have really enough time if we took just one week starting on the 25th. So that's kind of the first topic I wanna to discuss. And I just wanna get council's input on that. Uh, Ms. Blake, starting with the state, what do you think about the necessary time we'll need to go through questionnaires, get those submitted and review them before we can start our group for dire? Your Honor, I think the state is in agreement with what's been represented by the court. We would be inclined to recommend that we set a two-week time period for that, just essentially better safe than sorry if we get through them a little bit quicker. Um, otherwise, I think that it may delay the start of trial if we didn't have them selected. So I guess whether we want to be a little flexible on the actual day that we start the trial or whether we want to come in a little earlier before the, the set start date, would be in the court's discretion, obviously, but I think if we do two weeks, that would be sufficient to make sure we had plenty of time. Okay, well, I appreciate your comments. And of course, part of that decision affects when we get things set up and are gonna be there and need to coordinate that with Ada County. And I've confirmed that they are available in those time frames to begin if that's when we choose to start. Mr. Pryor, on behalf of the defense, uh, what are your thoughts are on starting with the uh, distribution of questionnaires to a jury pool? Judge, I agree with the court's analysis and that two weeks is appropriate. Okay. I will confirm those dates and get back to council. We'll still have a starting proposed date for evidence of April 1st, but we'll look at questionnaire process uh, likely on the 18th of March. So um, we may submit a supplemental order that covers that. If not, I'll just make sure that council's advised of the dates we'll be doing that. So that's the first issue I wanted to discuss. Um, in terms of our length of trial, assuming we do start evidence on or about the 1st of April, we've got it set through the months of April and May as it currently sits. I just wanted to get an update from the state as to whether or not you think that is still 
a accurate time frame for your uh, trial, Ms. Blake. Your Honor, I think the eight weeks would be sufficient for the state's anticipation of the length of this trial. I think, again, given some of the differences with this one versus the companion case, including that it is still a death penalty case, I think having that longer period of time for the trial is appropriate and would give us enough coverage if we set it for the eight weeks, not including the jury selection. Okay. Um, Mr. Pryor, any thoughts on our current scheduled time frame and whether you think that's adequate? Judge, I agree the eight weeks is uh, at a minimum is probably the appropriate amount of time. I think Ms. Blake and Mr. Wood are well aware that at least in this case, this, the defense is going to put on a defense. And I have a number of expert witnesses, which is another subject we'll need to discuss. So at least eight weeks would be appropriate. Very well. We'll uh, keep the trial schedule as it sits for now then. The next matter I wanted to raise involves the access of cameras in the courtroom in this trial. In this case, I'll note that on September 23rd of last year, uh, an order was entered uh, revoking authorization for live streaming uh, the case uh, that relate that was issued in this case and came about as a result of motions made in the companion case. There was a motion filed by the defense, Mr. Pryor filed on September 29th of last year, requesting that we do allow cameras in the courtroom. And the court issued a follow-up order on October 12th of last year and discussed that if these, at the time the cases were joined and they were later severed, of course, in this uh, order, the court mentions that if the court did order a severance of the cases, I would permit the issue to be revisited and would consider that these separate cases may have separate rationale for allowing or disallowing cameras in the courtroom during trial. So without arguing the motion today, because this potentially raises the right of media intervention into the issue, I would just like to schedule a hearing and the issue would be uh, the determination of cameras in the courtroom for trial. Um, at last posture, the state opposed it and the defense was in favor of it. Has that status changed on behalf of the state or do you wanna wait until the hearing to more fully discuss that, Ms. Blake? I think I can indicate at this juncture, the state will be maintaining the same position. We can, of course, address it more thoroughly at a hearing on this matter if we end up having one. Okay. Mr. Pryor, any thoughts on cameras in the courtroom on that issue and uh, scheduling hearing on that? Judge, I think it's important that the court set a hearing date on that. Um, without disclosing a lot of information, uh, I have not returned or responded to the numerous requests from media to uh, pursue a motion like that and it's quite frankly not my job to represent any of the media people out there that are inundating my email and, and everything else with requests but uh, i think at this point uh, given the fact that this case is going to trial and i expect the media to probably now jump all over the court's inquiry um, we probably better have a hearing and have the matter addressed Mr. Daybell has not changed his position uh, since I filed this motion, still maintains his feeling about having a public trial, but uh, Judge, I think at the time of the hearing, we'll make a final determination. Okay, well, um, let's schedule a hearing then, and I'll want to set enough time that if the parties wish to file any motions in support of or against, uh, what we'll do is uh, it's it's a hearing to determine whether or not my September 23rd, 2022 order should be amended or altered or left in place. And I'll consider argument on that. So <clears throat> I would think
Council, would it be reasonable to look at a December setting for that motion? Judge, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, quite frankly, based on the amount of uh, attention I seem to draw on this issue, I can't speak for what the state's getting requests for, but um, I expect, unfortunately, that a number of media outlets and other folks are going to jump all over this thing, and uh, I think it's going to take some time to properly address it. All right, I'm just reviewing my calendar. I'm, I'm really pretty booked up in December, but I can move things around. Um, I have a little concern, sorry to sit here and get through my calendar. I've got a couple of trials that I think might be happening with Fremont County on the week of the 11th. Um, what about Thursday, December 7th? Judge, I have a matter on that day that I have to attend to, I apologize, but um, other than the week of the 4th through the 8th and, and the 20th, I'm available at any time. Judge, may I interject? Yes. Uh, whether the court decides to have cameras or not, it's not going to change the, the tempo of um, how I prepare, I can't speak for the state. So if the issue was even addressed in January, quite frankly, it would just be the media would have to scramble and that doesn't necessarily hurt my feelings. So if the court wants to push it to January to make a decision, I wouldn't have a problem. I can't speak for this, whether that's acceptable to the state or not, but I'm comfortable going into January on this issue if we need to. All right, the alternative I'm looking at is maybe move that up a little bit to November 29th. I'm available on the 29th, Judge. I would uh, likely be holding this as an in-person hearing as well, Mr. Pryor, just so you know. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Blake, would that date work for the state? That date will work fine for the state, Your Honor. Okay, let's set that then for Wednesday, November 29th. We'll set that at 9.30 a.m. in the Fremont County Courthouse. And that will be a hearing to determine media access to the trial as it relates to the court's September 23rd, 2022 order. If the parties wish to file any motions in support of or opposed to any modification of the order, I'd ask that you submit those um, by Wednesday the 22nd, which would be the day before Thanksgiving. All right, we'll get an order out setting that. Um, anything else to address on that issue, Ms. Blake or Mr. Pryor? Nothing further from the state, Your Honor. Thank you. Nothing from the defense, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, counsel, that I think covers what I wanted to specifically address today. Uh, are there any other matters while we're here on the status conference that either party wishes to raise as we get towards the road of preparing for trial? Ms. Blake, is there anything the state wanted to address for the status conference today? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, one of the reasons that the state had wanted to have a status conference is 
with the last case, and especially when the cases were joined for trial, the court had set a monthly hearing date that we just had a day set aside so that we weren't scrambling to find dates to coordinate with counsel's calendars and the courts. So we would like to request that the court consider doing that. The state does have three motions that we intend to be filing here in the next week or so. Um, and I'm not sure when the first availability for a hearing date would be, but if we could maybe set a monthly date just to have that preserved. Um, so that was one issue. Um, another one, and I think Mr. Pryor was gonna address this as well, but we just wanted to make sure that we had the discovery deadlines that we were all on the same page. I think there was some confusion or concern on the expert deadlines. We had modified those previously when it was a joint trial. Uh, we changed those up a little bit. So I think we just wanted to make sure we were on the same page with those disclosure deadlines. And with the court um, setting the jury selection, I think we also just wanted to double check if jury instructions, if that's gonna affect any of those filing deadlines. Uh, since the official trial start, start date would be April 1st, but we would be starting some other stuff on the 18th of March. We just wanna make sure that doesn't impact the deadlines. And then we also, I think the court was waiting on a stipulation from the parties regarding some DNA testing that had been requested by counsel. In fact, that was the main basis for the severance in this case. It's our understanding that the defense is not going to pursue additional testing we wanted to make the court aware that the state is not going to pursue additional testing at this time. Um, that has been a little frustrating for the state because we do feel that that was, if not the sole basis, the main basis for the severance. And we're now incurring a second cost of trial time for uh, court staff and of course the, the offices involved in this, as well as extra testimony for the witnesses. So. It is a little frustrating, but we did want to update the court that it's our understanding that testing is not going to be completed so that the court is not waiting to see that or a stipulation regarding that matter. Okay, well, I was not aware of that, so not I appreciate aware. bringing that to my attention. Okay, and turning to Mr. Pryor, I agree it would be helpful to begin with uh, at least monthly set dates for motions. In lieu of trying to dig through calendars today, I'll reach out uh, likely through my staff attorney or through an email to counsel to get availability. For now, uh, I will intend to hold uh, at least once a month pretrial hearing dates on a standing basis so that the parties have time to argue any motions. We'll start with this November 29th day and where we've got the media issue scheduled. If the state wants to tag on any other additional hearings on that day, let's, let's do that. Uh, if you think you need something before then, contact me and then we'll go ahead and look at a date for December, uh, January and February and make sure that council's all available on proposed dates and we'll get we'll get monthly hearing dates set on the calendar going forward. In terms of the discovery deadlines, it sounds like Mr. Pryor wants to address that and the court scheduling order. Uh, what I will say is I will go back and take a second hard look at our scheduling order and determine if it looks like we need to modify that to accommodate the beginning of questionnaires, for example, and look at other deadlines and make sure that everyone will have adequate time for disclosure. So I'll take a, another look at the scheduling order and take that issue under advisement for now. Mr. Pryor, is there anything you'd like to address today at the status conference? Judge, just a firm date on the disclosure of expert witnesses. I, I, I will take a little bit of issue with what Ms. Blake said was the reason for the continuance. My recollection is getting discovery just on the eve of trial in terms of DNA evidence was the reason for that. But we're not gonna argue about that today. Uh, I had to go through a significant amount of time with an expert to, to make a decision regarding the DNA evidence. So it wasn't as simple as just saying, well, I don't need any more information. So I do need a firm date to provide for my experts and the additional experts that I now have uh, retained 
uh, and uh, I'd like a dead drop dead uh, deadline on um, disclosure of all witnesses and a discovery deadline as well, so that I can make sure that I have everything to the state so that we don't run into the same kind of problem that we did with the state not getting all the discovery to us in, on time. So um, at this point, uh, those are the three things that I would request, Judge. Thank you. All right, well, with that in mind, um, for now, the scheduling order will remain in effect. If it appears we need some additional clarification or given these alterations potentially in the trial start, uh, we need to modify any of the current deadlines. The court will issue a uh, amended scheduling order. If I believe we're changing things significant enough that I should get your input on, then I will uh, allow hearing on that and argument before I just unilaterally impose new deadlines on you. So we'll go back through our scheduling order and see if it looks like it'll suffice for a trial of this magnitude. And in terms of the issue on the further DNA testing, I appreciate counsel advising the court of that. Uh, clearly with the representation made here today on the record, uh, the only substantive change that has in the case is uh, that would likely then not be considered any cause or good good cause for any request for a trial continuance if suddenly somebody decides they do want to have it tested and there's not time before the trial. So uh, I'll take you at your word that it's not going to be tested and so it wouldn't create a basis for any delay in the case. And we will look through the scheduling dead deadlines to see if anything else needs to be modified. I'll also make sure we reach out to council to get our standing hearing dates scheduled starting uh, with December. And if you think you need a hearing before November 29th, then contact the court. And Judge, I looked at the court scheduling order and I, I'm just a little um, unclear as to the actual deadlines and what I represented in terms of uh, disclosure of witnesses and that. So if the court could reach out to all parties just to make sure that we all know what our deadlines are, because I'm a bit confused on the scheduling order, but uh, that can be done in another capacity at a, at a different type of hearing if necessary. Okay, fair enough. We'll look through the order and add any clarification that appears necessary. Thank you, Mark. All right, that'll conclude the issues I had today. Uh, Ms. Blake, is there anything further the state wished to bring to the court's attention this afternoon? Your Honor, just one additional thing, and I know the court's directed us to reach out to the clerk, and I'm happy to do that. I did just want to give everyone a heads up on a couple of the state's motions. We are going to be reaching out to see if we can get an earlier hearing date on those. And then that brought to mind, I think last time, I don't remember if it was a formal order of this court, but I think we'd set some deadlines on filings. So if one party filed a motion, I believe it had to be 14 days before they scheduled hearing, and that would give the other party time to file their seven days before. Um, and then it, so I just wanted to check if we are going to stick with something similar, just so we know as far as when we're trying to set a trial date that we stay, or not a trial date, excuse me, but a hearing date that we stay within those parameters. All right, uh, what we can do is incorporate some language that would cover response and reply deadlines in our notices of hearing. So uh, I think it's a good point, Ms. Blake, to make sure that we're not getting hit with uh, voluminous filings just on the eve of hearings so that everybody is prepared. I'll include language in future schedule of hearings to incorporate deadlines for filing of motions to be heard on those dates, as well as responses and replies. Uh, Mr. Pryor, anything else to bring up this afternoon? Judge, just that uh, I'm a 